A very warm welcome to the program. Today, we'll be speaking with the founders of Argonautic Ventures. Joining us from San Francisco will be Vikan Dujan and from Seoul, Chase Cho. Gentlemen, welcome to Global Signs. Hi there. Thank you for having us on. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello. Uh, this is Chase Cho from Seoul. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Now, Vikan, can you tell us about Argonautic Ventures? Argonautic Ventures is a platform of venture funds. We're composed of five venture funds, and each fund is industry specific. So it focuses on a sector or a set of subsectors. Uh, this allows our investors to allocate their assets uh, across a wide array of industries. So if they'd like to diversify across five different industries, they can invest in every fund, or if they're bullish on a specific industry, for example, biotech, ag tech, cloud computing, they can get exposure to that fund. We have 95 portfolio companies, 25% of which are currently in liquidity mode. So they're filing for IPOs as we speak or discussing acquisition term sheets. And we're focused on seed and series A investments. So we're, we're getting into these companies at a very early stage and they sell for much higher valuations. I see. Vikan, what motivated you and your partners to establish a venture capital investment fund? Yeah, great question. So we've all been investing in venture capital for the entirety of our career, but about five years ago, we sat down and we identified venture as the asset class that has the best dynamics for out-returning the market. I come from a traditional private equity background. My partners come from hedge fund and public markets backgrounds. Uh, and we have been doing venture the entirety of our career with our own personal capital and have had such success that we wanted to launch that for Argonautic. So asset dynamic for the first piece, and the second piece is our network of former executives that operate in the industries that we, we invest in. So the former head of the Food and Drug Administration in the US, Roger Beachy, he's a, a partner of ours that uh, assesses deals along with us. Uh, the former head of Genentech, the largest biotech company in the world, former executive software, former software executives. And this really gives us a unique perspective and insight on the industries that we're investing in. Now, Vikan and Chase, Argonautic Ventures manages money for Forbes 500 families throughout Asia. What differentiates Argonautics from other venture capital investment companies? Yeah, great question. So our differentiation, you can think of it in, in three pillars. So the first pillar is we see the best deals. The top founders in every industry comes to us because <laughs> our team is made up of executives from that industry. We've already seen success there, and they want to leverage our expertise so that they can do the same. And then the second pillar uh, is really our investor base. So we're very fortunate to work with some of the best investors in the world, and I'll let Chase speak to that because he's a critical part of it. I would like to add in by saying, um, explain a little bit about Korean investors, which I have invited them to this fund. Um, we select investors who can have a long-term relationship with our fund, and I would like to bring the U.S. technology and an opportunity to these Korea investors, which is rarely they can get in this um, Korea market. I see. Now, Chase, where is Argonautics head office located? And do you have offices in other countries? And what are its roles? And what is the role of Argonautics sole office? Right. So we have uh, many offices around the world. Um, for instance, we have Miami, San Francisco, and there's a Hong Kong, and there's a um, Taiwan, and also in Seoul. Uh, we all manage our investors, trying to keep the relationships, and we would like to report them very periodically uh, to make them uh, comfortable and excited about this fund. I see. Now, Vikan, Argonautics invests in cryptocurrency. What is your view on the sector, and which currency do you think has the most potential? We're very bullish on the blockchain sector, specifically within the decentralized finance or DeFi and the distributed web or DWeb parts of the industry. Now, there are several uh, decentralized finance applications that are exciting us, but in terms of which crypto excites us the most, considering the risk reward profile, uh, we'd have to go with Ethereum or Ether. The ticker is ETH. And the reason for this is Ethereum is the foundation in which all other DeFi platforms are built upon. So as the DeFi industry grows, Ethereum will grow underneath it. Uh, so we're very excited about crypto. We expect much higher adoption rates in the next decade, 
and we plan to continue to invest in this space. I see. Now, we're several months into a global pandemic. Looking into the future, which area should investors be looking to invest? Yeah, great question. Uh, so the three sectors that we're very excited about, and we actually have a fund focused on each one of these, is health tech and biotech, agriculture technology or ag tech, and cloud computing software. So when you think about what needs help right now, uh, it's these inefficient industries that haven't quite figured out how to manage COVID. So look at the healthcare systems. They're all struggling to take in the increased patients and manage this increased workflow. Technology is a useful tool that can help with that. Those are the investments that we're making. On the agriculture side, we have a huge problem with our food supply chain that's compounded with COVID. And technology is the, yet again the solution for this sector as well. Really, any mature industry can leverage cloud computing software to improve efficiencies and outcomes and ultimately increase revenues for companies in the space. Beacon, the U.S. presidential race has begun. For investment and also for overall economic environment, which candidate would be the best choice, do you think? You know, like any good investor, we, we see opportunity with both outcomes. In a Donald Trump election, we would likely see uh, continued market strength. We're at all-time highs within the market. IPOs are doing very well, likely because of the pressure that Donald Trump is putting on the Fed to keep interest rates low. Um, so we would expect more of that, which is great for our portfolio companies that are preparing to IPO. On the Joe Biden side, we would likely see a sustained push into improving environmental sustainability. And uh, he's very, he's a proponent of adopting clean tech to make this change. So clean tech is a sector of venture capital. So a Biden victory might result in some increased cash flow or increased fundraising for uh, certain sectors within the venture system. Very interesting times. Now, are there any specific industries or locations that your firm is interested in at the present? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it really aligns nicely with the industries that I mentioned that are uh, COVID proof, if you will. So health tech and biotech is a space that we're very excited about. We have investments in pharmaceutical technology companies that are creating novel treatments for cancer or pain management. We have um, medical technologies companies such as Neuros. Uh, on the ag tech side, uh, that's another sector we're very excited about. We have a tech, we have a company called Benson Hill Biosystems, which leverages CRISPR technology to do DNA and RNA um, adjustments to optimize yields of crops. So they're literally solving food shortages by using the science that we have available to us today and packaging it in a technology solution. And then the last sector that we're, we're very excited about is, is cloud computing software specifically construction technology and construction software. We have an investment in Procore, which is the world's largest construction technology company. And we see that industry as uh, being very inefficient because of their uh, lateness in adopting technology. As that changes, uh, we, we expect margins to improve as well as efficiencies internally to improve. And, and we, we expect our technology to be a big part of that. I see. Now, Chase, what are your views on the Korean stock market? And are there any stocks that you would like to recommend to our viewers today? Um, I would like to uh, talk about two companies. One is um, GS Construction, and the other one is Kakao. Uh, I met GS Construction through the, our portfolio company called Procore, which is, uh, as Vikin said, is a software company for the construction. I find out GS Construction is very flexible and agile in adapting new changes. So in their leadership, and another thing is that um, you know they're going to be a two trillion dollar infrastructure bill will be passed in U.S., which will give another big boost to the construction industry. That's why I recommend GS Construction. And the other company, Kakao, is um, I heard this from directly from Chairman Kim that he is just starting this company and he thinks this is the beginning of a cacao. He sees much more growth in future, um, mentioning that he has a hundred more companies to show to the world. So we are excited about that and he's also one of our investor. Thank you. That's fantastic. Beacon, Chase, thank you for joining us on Global Science today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Argonautic Ventures recommends GS Construction and Cacao. 
they feel that this is the beginning of the cacao story. I want to thank everyone again for joining us on Global Signs. Until we meet again, please be healthy and be safe. Thank you very much.